There's the head and the spark plug. Yeah, about 32 millimeters it needs to come back to. Just anything to keep it from sticking. So now, you just have to mix this really fast. There is the finished piston. Monopole bifilier magnetic resonating flex capacitor. Alright, so with, along with building some of these parts, well, first I should actually, before I get into that, I should go into some of the things that I changed to design. And I always do this as I go along. I start thinking about it more, and I'm like, okay, this isn't going to work. This just is not going to work, because it doesn't, doesn't quite work out the way it does that I imagine it often. So, here are the plans I've drawn up so far. You can see some of the numbers here. So, my stroke length, I figured out to be 28 millimeters long. Um, piston length is 35 millimeters. Um, I figured out the exhaust and intake port sizes. And uh, here's some of the dimensions on the piston, or the, the little, little, whatever this is, the uh, cylinder. You can see here's the uh, the inlet port and exhaust port, and then we've got a 0.5 millimeter um, lag between. So first the, so when the piston is coming back, so you've got your piston here. When your piston is coming back, first it will open up the exhaust port to let the um, hot, high pressure, um, exhaust gases escape, and then when it pulls up a little bit further, it will expose the uh, intake port, which will let the gases that were pressurized back here rush around and into the um, cylinder. So that's how it's going to work. But you can see some of my calculations there, like on the spark plug. There's point; it sticks out 0.8 millimeters there. You can see that. Um, just different things I was calculating and um, so I've changed the design I'm not actually going to use the crankcase like a, like this engine here it uses the crankcase to pressurize the gases when the piston comes back it pressurizes the gases with the crankcase so basically on here would have been where the carburetor was mounted and there was a little check valve that let the gases the new um, air intake go into here um, and then not come back out when the piston comes back. So I figured out that because my stroke is fairly long and for the size of um, piston I have, my my um, actual uh, crankcase would have to be very large, very long, and it would not, I felt like it wouldn't build up enough pressure. So if I couldn't build up enough pressure, then when the intake port opens, there wouldn't be enough pressure to really push the rest of the exhaust gases out, and I don't think it would be very efficient. It wouldn't work very well. So, I'm kind of eliminating that, and I'm actually going to go with a design more like this, where I have the um, uh, the connecting rod, or, yeah, con rod, whatever you call it, connecting rod, um, actually connected to here, which goes to the flywheel. So we have a push rod here, or whatever this is called, just a rod, that'll go through a gland like this, a, a brass tube. So that'll um, just go back and forth there, so it'll make a good seal. And that's what these plates are here in this copper. Um, so I made this all out of copper just because I have copper. So, <laughs> so here's our piston, exhaust port, intake port. There's our intake check valve, you can see there. So that's the intake check valve. Um, and then, so it goes down to the intake here. So when the piston comes back, it's going to pressurize the gases, the new um, air flammable gases back here. And uh, then once it gets sparked far enough, it'll open the uh, intake port, the or open the exhaust port first, the exhaust will exit, then the um, come back a little bit further, and the new gas air mixture will flow in and uh, fill up the chamber, and then it'll re go again. So, um, so yeah, and you can see actually here where I have, I've drawn some little um, curves on here, and I was looking at some of the designs on Google of different engines, and they have a, to keep, because if you don't have those, the new uh, mixture will just kind of flow straight across the top of the cylinder, or top of the piston, and go right back out the exhaust. So to have these little curves here, it actually um, baffles or something like that, I forget what they called it, but it kind of deflects, maybe it's a deflector or something, it kind of deflects the new air intake to kind of go down into the cylinder and kind of swirl around and push the rest of the exhaust out. So, And that's also how this engine is designed with these. I was actually noticing that they're not all exactly the same depth. 
they're all a little bit different and that causes a sort of swirl or something to push the gases out of the exhaust better so it was kind of interesting so but yeah um so this this is the part this end here so on this end where my spark plug is that's just going to be soldered right on the end of the cylinder so that'll be soldered on there so i can't remove that i won't have a um cylinder head that's going to be removable but this end over here is what these plates are so i'm going to have these two plates so my piston let's say or my cylinder this is my going to my say this is my cylinder um that'll have be soldered on there and then I'll be able to take this on and off. I'll have a seal there. And then this is where my gland is going to go, where my brass tube. So my brass tube will go there. And then my push rod will go through there to connect to the piston. So, so that's how it's going to work. And then these little copper triangles are just to brace that because there's going to be a, a bit of a force on that. All right, when you're cutting cylinders for um, engines and things like that using copper pipe, you can use a cutter like this. But you want to, um, usually you like turn this like one full revolution for every revolution you turn this. But you want to go just like a quarter or an eighth of a turn tightening that, then spin this a whole rotation, or else it will um, end up with mashing the pipe kind of, making it crimping it, making it smaller. You will still have to file it out a little bit at the ends because it will leave some burrs and things there. So um, just just a side note. But it works pretty good. It makes a very square cut, so that's the nice thing. Alright, so I drilled some holes for the exhaust and uh, intake ports just to uh, guide the ends there and make them nice and round. So now I just have to cut out the middle section with the Dremel. So I'm going to use this real fine cutting wheel. I'll probably go through like five of these, but I do have a bunch and they're pretty cheap. So, But I need something small, so that's why. Alright, well there are the holes all cut in the cylinder. So we have our um, exhaust port here. So looks pretty good, I think. There's our intake port, and then we have up here. This is going to be our um, connection that goes to the carburetor, and this part here will connect down to the um, intake port with a piece of copper that'll just go over top of that. I think that'll bend into like a U shape and stick over top. Um, and then for my intake, um, I believe I'm going to use this as my check valve, and that's just a, basically a um, brass fitting and it's got a little flap of uh, inner tube rubber stuck on there and it works quite well with a check valve seems to at least um, and then that's going to screw into this piece here so like that hence why there's teflon tape on there to seal it and there's solder on there because this was actually cracked but it's the only one i had and then this is going to go right on here so that'll be our intake so that should work good, I think. Um, and then, let's see, what else? Uh, so I'll try to show you here how... All right, so let me line this up. So when it's just... When it's just starting to open... All right, so when the, when the air port, or when the intake port is just starting to open, so there it's just starting to open a little bit, the exhaust port is about half open, about a millimeter open. So I think that should be good, hopefully. So, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out if this works or not. But um, I think my ports should be big enough. They look big enough to me. Alright, so I've actually decided to solder this joint first um, because I need to put this plate on still and center this part and the piston and everything. So I need to get this part soldered on so I can center those. Um, so I'm going to use, I actually decided to use a different type of uh, solder, it seems to work better for this, um, the copper at least, than the electronics solder. This is actually 100% um, tin, which this is actually electronic solder as well, but it's slightly different stuff. So that's the kind of stuff I'm going to use. I also am going to use this flux instead of my electronics flux, that's pipe flux. I figure that should work better because this is copper, which is pipe, basically pipe, and that is pipe. So let's uh, solder it.
once you get that joint heated up, it's, it flows on there real nice. Oh, it looks real nice. I'm very happy with that joint. Looks beautiful. All right. Now, yeah, that looks nice. Should be good and strong. And we'll just put some water on that, cool it off. See the solder went all the way through. Perfect. That is what we want. Good solid joint. All right, so I've got my intake port passage all bent out of this piece of copper. This is pretty thin stuff, actually. Um, but I think it should be great. So that'll go right on there. And then I've got my uh, intake, and that's going to be soldered on here. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to solder next. Just solder those things on there. So there should be enough room between there, or it should be tall enough to allow enough gases to go through there. Hopefully. So that'll go like that. Alright, so I've binded that on because it's really light and I'm afraid it's going to move while I'm soldering it. On with some real fine uh, high temperature thread, which I pulled out of this insulation tape. So this is like some really high temperature. It's probably like ceramic or something. I don't. It might be fiberglass, but I don't think it is. It's something else. It's not asbestos or <laughs> that. But uh, yeah, so binded that on there. We'll see if that works. Sometimes I think something's a great idea and I actually try it and it doesn't work at all. Alright, so I got it all fluxed up, so let's uh, start soldering it, or attempt to at least. Uh, where's my blue torch? I also have a paper towel in here that's wet to try to keep that joint from remelting. Well, they get quite hot, and they're not melting, so that's good, the little strings. Oh, one melted. Guess they're not that resilient then. And I gotta move the camera. Sorry, guys. All right, well there that is all soldered up. <clears throat> so we've got the passage there that goes from the um, intake port to the uh, compressor, whatever you call the part behind the um, piston here. And we've got the uh, intake soldered on as well. So it looks pretty good. The solder does not wet aluminum very well. Let's put our uh, solder in there. Like that, I guess.